squad it's quads and welcome back to another review video today we are looking at the sequire v2 h743 with am32 esc a few months ago i reviewed the version one of this and was so impressed with it it is now in my daily driver five inch fpv quad the one issue that i did have with it is and it was unlucky for sequire that this happened is at the time el heli had started to pull out and then all of a sudden pulled out so we couldn't upgrade to the firmware that had already been wrote and if you had an old one within it so there was a little bit of a minor issue now like i say and like i said back then i very rarely update my esc firmware and that's my daily driver and i've had no issues with it however one issue that i did raise or one point i did raise should i say to make things better would be to release it with an am 32 ESC and to their credit they've listened and that's what they've done. So today we're going to look at the changes that they've made, the positives, the negatives and whether or not you should go for this or you should go for the V1. Now we covered a lot of detail and I'll put in the corner now the review to the H1 because we covered a lot of details as to why you would want a H7. Sure if you can buy an F4 that's really really cheap you'll fly it you'll have very few problems brilliant but if you want the best of the best the H7 is where it's at so I said at the time the H7 is where we need to be if you want the best of the best and this is providing that we've got a, a really good ESC despite the issues with the firmware which was not Sequire's fault just to clarify and we had an almost perfect package and a few weeks ago Sequire said we have released version 2 we would like to send it to you for um, for you to have a look at. Put a video out, see what you think. So I said, okay. And until I received it and built it, I didn't know anything about it. So I assumed it was just the same as version one, potentially maybe a few dollars extra, but with an AM32 ESC. And now that is not the case. So let's first of all, take a look at the spec. Obviously we've got the high performing STM 32H743 MCU as the brains of the operation here. We've got a total of six UARTs. It will control up to eight motors and will go up to 8S. One of the main changes from the V1 is they've changed the gyro chip to the STM32G071. I don't have a lot of experience with this, but from what I understand is it can be a little bit more challenging for newbies to tune this than the MP6000, which we all love and try and get a hold of as much as we can. The problem with the MP6000 is there was a chip shortage, it was really hard to get a hold of them. I'm not sure what the current state is, but I dare say, from what I understand, we, we may have to be looking at different gyros. So they've gone with a different gyro. Do your own research on that, because from what I understand, if, if you're a bit of a newbie, you may struggle a little bit getting it tuned in comparison to the MP6000. We've got built-in ESC telemetry data, premium MOSFETs, PWM will support to 180K. We've got the angled motor pads as well, which I absolutely loved from the version one they've stayed. It comes, the ESC comes in either a 20 or a 30 mount, and the flight controller comes in a 20 and a 30 mount. So that, that's that's the spec. I mean, we can look at we can look at more details if you if you really want. You know, we can look at the fact that I completely forgot to mention that it's got an onboard barometer, OSD, and black box recorder because I'm an idiot. Got a couple of BECs on it, so a 5 volt and a 10 volt. Like I say, it'll control eight motors. It'll go up to 8S. It's got a max continuous current of 70 amp and a peak current of 150 amp, and it will go all the way up to D shot 600. So what does the package include? So you have a couple of connectors to plug in to the onboard ports for things like your air unit, GPS, etc. You've also got a capacitor and buzzer is included as well. You've got obviously the bolts, the nuts, and the washers and the grommets, an XT60 cable, an XT60 connector, and everything that you could possibly need to get this connected to each other and the rest of your quad. This is not a kit where you will need anything else from it. So this is a real high premium quality stack. I think one of the real positives here is if we take a look at the version one, it was it's currently on sale at 
$139. Whereas this version two is $116 within that. You're actually getting a premium stack with premium components at a price where there are certain companies selling F4s for $100. I've flown this, I've tested this, I've tuned this. I've not had any sort of issues. My builds are fairly clean. They don't get battered in bandos like bot grinders, for instance. Um, I am a risk averse when it comes to crashing. I do crash. I try my best not to. Um, so it could be I've not had any issues because of that. But I've tested it, I've flown it, I've put some flight, or I will put some flight footage on the screen. And you are getting a real premium stack for what was not too long ago considered a budget price i think if we look at in the uk that's probably be about 100 pounds again i know plenty of companies selling f4s for that price so i think what they've done here is a really good thing we've also moved the main thing as well is we've moved from bl heli 32 to am 32 so that gives us open source firmware on our flight controllers which means that we can update them it means that we're never going to be stuck in that indelible loop of, oh, well, this is a private company. It's a private enterprise. We're keeping our things. There's nothing you can do because we've moved to open source. Open source doesn't always work. Open source isn't always brilliant, but certainly within the FPV community, open source is generally speaking the thing that drives innovation. If we look at ELRS and just how much innovation they've drove, that is completely open source as well. So AM32, I think is going to do great things moving forward in the FPV community. And in the meantime, it keeps us all safe and able to actually update our ESCs. So I will leave a link in the description down below. It is an affiliate link. It won't cost you any extra. It just shows Sequire that I'm worth working with again in the future. If you do make a purchase, I would ask you to consider using the link below. Now, just talking about channel updates for a second. First of all, before we go into that, if I can just ask it, if I've earned it, of course, you like, comment and subscribe down below. And if I haven't earned it, that's okay. I'll keep plugging away and maybe on the next one. I've re-enabled channel memberships. I did it silently and I did it discreetly without any fanfare. There's only one tier and that tier will enable you to get a shout out in every full length video. This. This is a full length video and we've already got a member, Barry Morgan, FPV. Thank you so much for being there. Also in the future, we have, when we hit 20,000 subs, which we were rapidly sort of flying towards last week, we've, I think we've gone up about 4,000 subscribers in the past six weeks. It's been absolutely insane and I appreciate every single one of you. When we get to 20,000 K, I will have a giveaway of a 4K camera drone to give you. There is already footage in my shorts asking you to guess what type of drone it is. You'll find out when the review drops, of course. The review isn't done yet, but there is footage from the initial flight. Go ahead and have a guess and see if you can find out what type of drone it is that you have a chance of winning. But keep your eyes peeled for that video because that video will have the competition in it and with it, your chance to win a 4K camera drone. You've all been amazing. I've been quads. Until next time, Peace.